that is tonight's topic. All right. Um, we're gonna open up. Hmm. You know what? Let me go somewhere first. Okay. Give me before I actually get to my notes. Would you give me first Maccabees? This is First Maccabees chapter two and verse forty-nine. First Maccabees two verse forty-nine. Okay. First Maccabees two verse forty-nine. First Maccabees chapter two verse forty-nine. Come on. Now, when the time drew near that Matthias should die, he said unto his sons. Now hath pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. So this is our forefather, Matthias. Okay, he's talking to his sons now. Okay. Um, give me first Maccabees 2, verse 1. Let's see the sons of Matthias. Okay, he's speaking to his sons, he's about to die. He did, he did great works in Israel. Now he's about to die. Now he's gonna pass the, he's already passed the wisdom and knowledge and understanding to his sons. So his sons may continue what he does. Okay, that's Maccabees 2, verse 1. Let's start there. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. In those days arose Mattathias, the son of John, the son of Simeon, a priest of the sons of Joarib from Jerusalem and dwelt in Modin. So now, Mattathias was from the type of Levi. Come on. And he had five sons. Mm -hmm. Joanan called Cadiz so, Simon, Simon. Wait. And he had five sons. He had five sons. Joanan called Cadiz. Okay, come on. Simon called Tassi. Okay, come on. Judas, who was called Maccabees. Really? Eliza called Averan and Jonathan, whose surname was Aphis. So now he had Eliezer called Avaran and Jonathan, whose surname was Aphis. Now, go back to verse Maccabees 2, verse 49. These are the sons of Marathias now. Okay, verse Maccabees 2, verse 49. One more again. Verse Maccabees chapter 2, verse 49. Now, when the time drew near that Marathias should die, he said unto his sons, now has pride and rebuke gotten strength, and the time of destruction and the wrath of indignation. Wait. Now, therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. You see what he's saying? He says, and give your lives, give your lives. Because our whole lives is about what? The laws of the Most High God. Give me that in Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Okay, it says, give and give your lives for the covenant of your forefathers. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. He says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty, not some. The whole duty, the purpose why we are born on this earth is to fear God and keep his commandments. Okay? Go back to where you were there. First Maccabees, chapter, chapter 2, verse 50. Now therefore, my sons, be zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. And give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Give me one second. Okay, read verse 50 again. I'm sorry. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 50. Now therefore, my sons, be ye zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. He says, give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Watch this. Okay, we need to give our whole lives for the covenant of our forefathers. We must give our whole lives to defend our brothers and sisters to show them that we love them. We must put our lives on the line. That's what Marathias is teaching his son. And I'm talking to you men now, particularly. Okay, watch this. 
give me the book of John, okay? Give me John chapter 15, because we walk after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior this day, okay? John chapter 15, start at verse 12. John 15, verse 12, read that. John chapter 15, verse 12. Mm -hmm. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. That ye what? That ye love one another as I have loved you. That, that you love one another as I have loved you. He's going to tell us how he did that. Read. Greater love hath no man than this, that a may lay down his life for his friends. Read that again, verse 13. John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater mm -hmm. love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You see that part right there? That's some heavy stuff right there, what Christ is saying. I need you brothers to understand what's coming out here. Is that greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff right there. So, when it says give your life for the covenant of your forefathers, you put your life on the line for your brothers and sisters that you don't even know. That's what this, that's what, that's your call of duty right there. That is the call of duty is that your job is to go out there, put your life on the line for people that you don't even know. Your brothers and sisters that you don't know. You understand? It says greater love, there's no greater love than that. Where you lay down your life for your brothers and sisters. That's what Mother Sayers is saying. That's what Christ is saying out of his own mouth. He did that thing, literally. Okay, go back to say first Maccabees 2 now. First Maccabees 2, verse 50 again. First Maccabees 2, verse 50. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, my sons, be zealous for the law and give your lives for the covenant of your fathers. Give your lives for the covenant of your fathers because great, there's no greater love than this one. When you put your life on the line for your brothers and sisters, great. Really. Call to remembrance what acts our fathers did in their time. So mm -hmm. shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. So he says we must remember the great acts our forefathers did in their time. So we can learn from them and walk after their footsteps. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. We're going to rule for us. The nations will know us. The nations will know our children. They were going to know our children's name. Okay, watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Zephaniah. Okay, give me Zephaniah chapter 3 real quick. That we may receive great honor and an everlasting name. Watch this. Mm. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse. Start of verse 19. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 19. Come on. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that hate, that halted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Are we not being put to shame? Wherever the Lord has scattered us, yes, we are being put to shame by these nations that are around about us. The Lord says, I'm going to change that thing. Okay, read that again. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halted, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. The Lord is saying he's going to make sure that everybody knows that we are the children of Israel. Okay? Everybody's going to know this thing. Okay? Watch this. Hmm. Give me... Nah, I don't want to go there. It's going to, it's going to be a long drive. I want to go there. Go back to where was that. There's Maccabee 2. Verse 51 again. First Maccabees, the two verse fifty-one. Come on. Call to remembrance 
what mm -hmm. acts our fathers did in their time. Ray. So shall ye receive great honor and an everlasting name. Come on. What was not Abraham found faithful in temptation and it was imputed unto him for righteousness? You can read about that in uh, Genesis 21. I mean, Genesis 22. Come on. Joseph, in the time of his distress, mm -hmm. kept the commandment and was made Lord of Egypt. You see that thing? That's Genesis 39. Read on. Phineas, our father, being zealous and fervent, obtained the covenant of an everlasting priesthood. That's our forefather Phineas, when he strike a javelin to one of the Syrianites who was sleeping with a Moabite in the camp. Go ahead. Jesus, for fulfilling the word, was made a judge in Israel. This Jesus talk about Joshua. Joshua. Go, come on, come on. Verse 56. Caleb, for bearing witness before the congregation, received the heritage of the land. Read. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an everlasting kingdom. Read. Elias, for being zealous and fervent, for the law was taken up into heaven. Come on, that's Elijah. Come on. Ananias, Azarias, and Mishael, by believing, were saved out of the flame. That you can read about that in the book of Daniel. Come on. Daniel, for his innocency, was delivered from the mouth of lions. Ray. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none put that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. So if we put our trust in the most high God, we are not going to be overcome. We will not be confounded. We must trust in the Lord with all our heart. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Come on. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. So now this is a commandment right here. We must trust in the Lord with all our heart. Don't come before the Lord with a double heart. That's what he's saying right there. With all your mind, not one foot in and one foot out. With everything you've got, put your trust in the Lord. Okay, give me the book of Ecclesiastes now. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 28. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 28. Mm -hmm. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor. Read. And come not unto him with a double heart. You see that thing? Do not come before the most high God with a double heart. Let your yea be yea, let your nay be nay. Don't be lukewarm, okay? Be fervent in the spirit. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 8. Distrust not the fear of the Lord when thou art poor, mm -hmm. and come not unto him with a double heart. You see that thing? Give me James 1 and 8. James chapter 1 verse 8. James chapter 1 verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Because why? He cannot make a decision. He says, is unstable in all his ways because you trust in your ways instead of the ways of the Lord. Because you are double-minded. As long as you are double-minded, as long as you trust in your ways, you will always be double-minded guaranteed. That's what the Lord is saying. Go back to First Maccabees. Okay, First Maccabees. Chapter 2. Verse 61 again. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 61. Come on. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none did put their trust in him, that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. So those that put their trust in the Lord will not be overcome because they are not coming before the Lord with a double heart. Give me Sarah chapter 2. Sarah chapter 2. Okay, Sarah 2, verse 10. Read that. Mm 
Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 10. Right. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Mm -hmm. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? You see that thing? Whom did the Lord ever despise that called upon him? Nobody. The Lord will not despise if you come, if you call upon him. But when you call upon the Lord, do not call upon the Lord with a double mind. The Lord will ignore you. Read verse 10 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Nobody, because you're coming before the Lord with a, with, with a what? With a clear mind. You're sober. You're sober-minded. You're not double-minded. You know exactly what you're asking for. And you have the faith that the Lord will answer you in due season. Your job is to be patient and wait upon the Lord. You understand? You would say, put your whole trust in the most high God. Okay? Go back to First Maccabees now. Chapter 2. Verse 61 again. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 61. Mm -hmm. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. Wait. Fear not then the words of a sinful man for his glory shall be uh, shall be dung and worms. Shall be poop and worm. Read that again verse 62. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 62. Fear not then the words of a sinful man, for his glory shall be dung and worms. Because we only fear the most high God, we don't fear man. Jump down to verse 64. Verse 64. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law, for by it shall ye obtain glory. Read that again, verse 64. First Maccabees chapter 2, verse 64. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law, mm -hmm. for by it shall ye obtain glory. So now, what, what is Mazatiah saying? It says, show yourself men in the behalf of the law. He is saying the only time you can show yourself to be a man is when you are standing up for the laws of God. The only time you can show yourself to be a woman is when you keep God's commandment and you defend what is written. That is the only time when the Lord will recognize you as a man or a woman before him. Read that again. First Maccabees chapter 2 verse 64. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men in the behalf of the law. For by it shall ye obtain mercy. For by it shall ye obtain glory, not mercy. For by the law, you when you stand, before, when you stand on behalf of the law, you're going to obtain glory. You will get the glory of the kingdom. That's what he's saying. That's the reward. That is the just reward that the righteous is waiting for. Okay? Now, give me second Ezra, chapter 10, verse 33. Second Ezra, 10, verse 33. Watch this. Second Ezra, chapter 10, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 10, verse 33. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. So Ezra is being told, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. The only time when the Lord will advise you is if you stand up manfully. Meaning what? Grow some stone. Okay? Read that again, verse 33. Second Ezra chapter 10, verse 33. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. Okay, is a stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. So what is he saying? Once you get your balls back, then I'm going to advise you. And that's not only talking about the, the, the brothers that have wives. No, it's talking about those you brothers that are raised, were raised up by your mother. You get your balls back from your mother's handbag. Okay, it's a stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. Read that again. Second Ezra chapter 10, verse 33. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. 
watch this. Jump down to verse 38. Verse 38. He answered me then and said, Hear me, and, I'll, and I shall inform thee, and tell thee wherefore thou art afraid. For the highest will reveal many secret things unto thee. Read that again, Mr. Heath. I want you brothers to see what's been said here. The only time when the Lord will reveal many secret things unto thee, you need to get your balls back. Maybe I need to change the topic. Okay? Read that again, verse 38. Second Ezra, chapter 10, verse 38. Mm -hmm. He answered me then and said, Hear me, and I shall inform thee. Great. And tell thee, and tell thee wherefore thou art afraid. For the highest will reveal many secret things unto thee. Jump back up to verse 33 now. Verse 33 again. Verse 33. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. So that's something very odd about this verse. You see, when you dig deeper into the verse, it says, And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. What is he implying? That means, because if you are not standing up manfully, guess what you are? You are a child. You look like a man, but you are a child. You are a boy. You are a baby. Okay? That's why he's commanding. He says, stand up manfully. Because guess what? When you look at the men of the men of Israel, they were not standing up manfully. They were overgrown babies. That's why he's saying, stand up manfully. Because when you look at the state of the men of Israel, they are, they are children. They are boys. Mama's babies, okay? Men that their women have their balls in their pants. That's what he's going into here. That's why he's commanding the men, stand up manfully, and I will advise you. Okay? Watch this. Give me Luke. Hmm. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. We're going to go to Luke in a couple of something. Give me 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Uh -huh. When I was a child, I speak as a child. When I what? When I, I understood what? as a child. Wait, 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 wait. Read verse 11 again. Read it slow for me. Okay, I need to take the meat of the bone. Read that thing again. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Read. When I was a child, mm -hmm. I speak as a child. He says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. That's why he says, stand up manfully. Because what is the state of the men of Israel? They are children. Okay? That's why it says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. Go ahead. I speak as a child. Mm -hmm. I understood as a child. Read. I thought as a child. Stop right there. It says, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Because the state of the nation of Israel, the men, they are children. Okay? That is the state of the black men. Children. Children that women are running their the circles around. Them. That's where the Lord is commanding Ezra to come to tell us, stand up manfully so I can give you responsibility to wake up the nation of Israel. That's what he's saying right there. Because what was the state of the nation of Israel? The Apostle Paul is giving you the state of the nation of Israel of what needs to happen in the process of time. From a child, you need to become a man. But you need to be taught how to become one. You understand? Because guess what? The Lord is saying, we are what? He's got a boyish mindset. Once we get the, the mindset of a man through the laws of God, only then the Lord will give us responsibility to wake up his nation. Okay? Watch this. Give me Luke 7, verse 31. Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Luke chapter 7, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? Really? And what and to what are they like? So now verse 31, the Lord is doing a comparison. It says, Where unto then shall I liken, shall I compare the men of this generation? So there's a comparison going on here. And to what are they like? What can I compare them to? The men of this generation. Next verse. They are like unto children, uh -huh. sitting in the 
sitting in the marketplace really? and calling one to another saying, and say, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. This is the state of mind of the black man, okay? It says, where unto shall I like and shall I compare the men of this generation? He says, they are like children sitting in the marketplace, calling one to another, okay, saying, we have piped unto you, ye have not, and ye have, you have not danced. We have mourned to you and ye have not wept. Watch this. Go back to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. One more again. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. I thought as a child. So now this is the state of mind of the child, like the, of the black man, childish state, a childish state of mind, a boy state of mind. So here it says, this is what they say. They are like children sitting in a marketplace calling one to another. You understand? And when they are calling one to another, you see what they are saying? We have piped unto you, you have not, and you have not dead. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. This is how children speak. You understand? Peer pressure. If you don't, if you don't want to um, go along with what they are, what they want you to do, guess what they do? They throw tantrums. You understand? They will bully you. Okay? They'll throw stones at you. They'll steal your toy. They'll break your toy. You understand? They'll break your truck that your mother bought you. Okay? Things of that nature. That's what children do. If you don't do what they say, they throw tantrums. That is the state of the mind of the black man. So the Lord is saying, stand up manfully. Then I will advise you. Because why? You are a child, you speak like one, you understand like one, and you think like one. Let's get an example of that thing. Give me that in 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 6. Okay, let's get an example of speaking as a child. Okay? Speaking as a child and understanding as a child and thinking like one. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings chapter 12 verse 6. This is Jero this is Rehoboam. Okay, this is Ray Boom after Solomon died. Okay, watch this. First Kings chapter 12, verse 6. First Kings chapter 12, verse 6. This is the state of mind. And King Ray. This is how children think. You understand? This is how children speak. You understand? They dumb. They don't know it. They have no, they are void of understanding, void of responsibility. They don't think about the consequences, nothing. That's the state of mind of a child. Guess what? That is the state of mind of the black man this day. That's why now we have to go into this topic. Okay? Read that again. Verse 6. First Kings chapter 12, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men uh -huh. that stood before Solomon, his father, while he had lived and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? How do you advise that I may answer this people? He's speaking to the wise man that used to eat. That used to advise his father, King Solomon, the wisest man that walked the earth. Okay, come on. And they speak unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant, if thou be a servant unto these people this day, if thou be a servant, watch this. Give me the book of Matthew 23, real quick. Okay, Matthew 23. Okay, Matthew chapter 23, verse 11. Watch this. Matthew 23, verse 11. Read that. Matthew 23, verse 11. Uh -huh. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Read that again. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Christ was a servant. He is the greatest of us all. You understand? He was a servant. Guess what? We must walk after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior the Christ. Because he's the one speaking here. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. Go back to where he was at. First Kings chapter 12 and 7 now. First Kings chapter 12 and 7. Uh -huh. And they speak unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, right. and will serve them mm -hmm. and answer them, and speak good words to them, 
then they will be thy servants forever. You see what he's saying? If thou be a servant unto the people. So now they are giving him a path to greatness. But because he is thinking like a child, he's speaking like one. He is childish. He doesn't understand the, the wisdom that is being dropped on his head. He doesn't understand that. Okay? Read that part again. First Kings chapter 12, verse 7. And they speak unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and will serve them, and unto them, and speak good words unto them, then will then they will be thy servants forever. Meaning, speak good words unto them. The good words is what? The good news, the gospel. Teach them the law. Okay, come on. Verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men. What did he do? He forsook the counsel of the old men. Because he's a what? He's a child. He, 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 he doesn't understand what he was just given. Verse 6 and 7 is the wisdom that the wise men that surrounded his father is giving him. But he doesn't want to follow the counsel. Why? Because he's thinking like a child. He behaves like a child. Okay, because children, when you when you when you correct children, guess what they do? They throw tantrums, they become upset, they become moody, they become emotional. That is the plight of the black man today. Okay, in the world and within the camp, you correct the black man, they will secretly hate you. They will hold grudges. They'll be emotional. Mm -hmm. That is what we are seeing right here. So he forsook the counsel of the wise man. Could you imagine that? The wisest man that ever walked the earth in his time. He's, he had advisors. Guess what? He said, nah, I don't want that. Okay? Because that's what the Apostle Paul is saying, what he said right there. When I was a child, okay, I spake and thought as a child. Because children have no sense. That's why Christ was saying, I'm going to give you a comparison of the men of this generation. They are like children. Their thought process, their speech, dumb as hell. That's what he said. Okay, read verse 8 one more again. First Kings chapter 12, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But he forsook the counsel of the old men mm -hmm. which they had given him. Read. And consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. What did he do? And which stood before. Him. And consulted with the young men that were grown up with him. You see that thing? He consulted with the young man that he grew up with. Instead of going higher, he goes low. You see that thing? So that's why I tell you, brothers, don't have that Rehoboam syndrome. The reason why Rehoboam went to the people that he grew up with him, because he knew them, they're going to tell him what he wants to hear. They are not going to tell him the truth. They're not, they're not going to give him what he, what he needs. They're not going to tell him what he wants to hear. Okay? That's why he, went, he consulted with the young man that he grew up with. But he forsook the counsel of the old man. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, okay? Give me the book of Proverbs real quick. Proverbs. Give me Proverbs 22. Proverbs chapter 22, start verse 1. Proverbs 20. You know what? Proverbs 11 verse 14. Let's start there. Proverbs 11, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors. He had a multitude of counselors. Wise men. Plural. Wise men that were advising his father. So, okay. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Meaning what? You are going to be protected if you have a multitude of counselors. But if you don't get one, Guess what? The people will perish. The people will fall. Read that again, verse 14. Proverbs 11, verse 14. Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge. Really? But he that hateth reproof is brutish. That's exactly what Rehoboam did. He is brutish because he's a child. Jump down. 
jump down to verse 59. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, mm -hmm. but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, because Rehoboam was right in his own eyes, because what was he? He was a fool. Okay? That's how children think. They just make decisions on a whim. They don't think about the consequences. They just do stuff. Okay? Read that again. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, mm -hmm. but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. He that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Let me see. It's not part of my notes. Give me Sarah 21 verse 15. Ecclesiastes 21 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 21 verse 15. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. Mm -hmm. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him, and he, and he casteth it behind his back. That's exactly what Jacobon did. He took the way the words of the wise and he cast it behind his back. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse. 15. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it displeaseth him, and he casteth it behind his back. Now watch this. Watch this. Go back to 1 Kings. I'm going to show you something. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 8. 1 Kings 12, verse 8. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But he forsook the counsel of the old men. You see what he which did? They had given Hold him. On. He forsook the counsel of the old men. He says, but as soon as one of no understanding hearing it, it displeases him and he casted it behind his back. That's what Rehoboam did. He cast the wisdom of the wise men behind his back. That's when he forsook the counsel of the old men. Okay, come on. Verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, Wait. which they had given him, uh -huh. and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. So now you need to really think about it. Okay, back then, let's fast forward to today. Imagine Rehoboam today, okay? The, now he is sitting on the throne, okay? He has no wisdom, he is a fool, he is a child, okay? What, what are things that children want? Today is what? I want Jordans, I want sneakers, I want the PlayStation, I want an Xbox, I want ice cream, okay? I want to go to the movies, I want a car, I want to be on a helicopter, I want a flat screen TV, I want Gucci, okay? That's what they are thinking in their mind. That's what they want. I want to be going shopping every day. That's what children think. They don't think about the nation, okay? I want a big toy. I want to show my friends. That is the state of mind of what Rehoboam was like. That's the same way. The, today, the state of mind of the black man is exactly the same way. Because when the black man has, when he's supposed to be given responsibility, guess what they do? They don't take care of their wives. They don't take care of the children. Guess where you find them? Bottle store, they drink booze, they smoke, they take their pants, they sleep around, they pop babies, they don't take care of them. They force the, the women to commit abortions because he's not ready to be a father because he's a boy. You see that thing? The same thing. And if it's not there, guess what? He's putting gold, gold in his mouth. He's blown in his hair. He's wearing pink and orange underwear. That's the only thing that is in their mind. Putting tattoos on their, on their skin and all of that. You understand? Perming their hair, blonding it. Wearing tight pants, nagging. That is the mind of the black man. So you really need to think about it today. Okay? You need to think, you need to fast forward it to today. I don't want a job. I want to sit down and play video games all day. Okay? I want to go to the mall. 
that is that's what that is what in the mind of the black men these days. Okay, read that again, verse eight. First Kings chapter twelve, verse eight. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, mm -hmm. and which stood before him. Because what Re the decision that Rehoboam made was that if he has to listen to the counsel of the wise men, the old men that advise his father, that means he needs to have responsibility. There's responsibilities that he needs, he needs to be responsible for the nation. But he didn't want that. So he understood that um, if he has to follow the counsel of the wise men, he has to be responsible. And it takes a man to be responsible. He didn't want to be a man. He wanted to remain a boy and be void of responsibility. You understand? The reason why I'm so passionate about this topic is because when you read, when I read the scriptures, I see really how great we are as a people. We are the greatest people that walk this earth. The mightiest nation that set foot on this planet earth. And when I see black men, you understand, you young men in, in the camp, just be making dumb decisions, not taking this too seriously. I become mad as hell, make me sick to my stomach. Because I see really how great you are, how great you can be. But you take this Bible for granted. You understand? That's why there's no time for shutting and jiving. We got work to do. Okay? We've got work to do. We don't have time for playing games. If you go off, you'll get checked. Why? Because I understand how great we are as a people. It's written in the Bible. You understand? Read that again. First Kings chapter 12, verse 8. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, uh -huh. and on. stood before him. Read. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people? Mm -hmm. Who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. You see that thing? The people, this is what they wanted. Because King Solomon was putting a lot of burden on the people for his foreign wives. Read. Verse 10. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto, the, unto this people, and that speak unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. So you see what he's saying? He says, I'm going to be harder. I'm going to be harder on the people than my father's wrong. That's what he's saying. Very disrespectful. Okay? Because he was walking with, his, with a forward mouth. Where is he getting the advice from? From the dumb friends that he grew up with. Bam. Okay, he was surrounded by bums. I'm not going to be surrounded by bums. Neither should you, brother. Okay? We are here to get the wisdom of the Most High God so we can go out there and wake the nation up. That is the job. That is the call of duty. Next verse. And now, whereas my father did lead you with the heavy yoke, mm -hmm. I will add to your yoke. Come on. My father had chastened you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So what is he saying? To hell with the nation. I don't care about the nation. I don't care about the responsibility that I have to my people. Because I hate my people. That is what Rehoboam must say. That is the state of mind of Rehoboam. Hatred towards his people. Because that's what children do. Children are selfish. Children only think about themselves. Me, 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 me. That's children. That's the mind of the black man. So we need to do what? We need to have the spirit of charity. We need to love our brothers like we love ourselves. We need to think about the nation. This mission is bigger than one man. It's bigger than all of us. This is about the most high God's people. The 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay? Give me Sarah 47, verse 23. Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 47, verse, 40, verse 23. Read what you got. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 47, verse 23. Come on. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers, and of his seed he left behind him Rehobo. Uh -huh. Robo. Even the foolishness of the people you see what and Rehoboam one was? that had on. no understanding. It says Rehoboam was the foolishness of the people. He was dumb as hell. You understand? He was dumb. And he made that decision to be dumb. 
because he had the privilege, the blessing of having counselors around him. He guess what he did? He said, to hell with that. To hell with that, I don't want to hear that. I'm going to do my own thing. And that's the spirit I see in some of you brothers. You have the blessing of being able to pick up the phone, ask questions, but you don't do that. You do not. Some of you don't do it. Some of you do. Some of you do not. Okay? Because you have the spirit of Rehoboam. The foolishness of the people because Rehoboam was selfish. He wasn't about his people. He wasn't about to lay his life down for the 12 tribes of Israel, like Christ said. There's no greater love than you lay your life down for the deliverance of your people. Okay? Read that again. Verse 23. Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers, and of his seed he left behind him Robo, uh -huh. even the foolishness of people, Wait. and one that had no understanding. And one that had no Who understanding. Turned. He didn't have any understanding. You understand? He did not have understanding. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Okay? Mr. Rack. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 21. Sirach chapter 21, verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 14. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Uh -huh. And he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. That's exactly what happened to Rehoboam. Okay, his inner his inward part was like a broken vessel. His mind was like a broken vessel. Because if you have a vessel and you pour water into that vessel, the vessel is supposed to hold the water. His mind, his spirit was so what was so such a fool that you give him knowledge, his mind is broken. His mind is full of what? Foolish thoughts. So now when you're supposed to give him knowledge, that mind cannot hold no knowledge because it's like a broken vessel. The water just goes through the vessel, one ear out the other. Okay, read that again. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 14. Mm -hmm. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel, okay. and he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. He will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth, because that's what happened to Rehoboam. Rehoboam did not hold no knowledge, that's why he had no understanding. Because his mind could not hold knowledge, but he could hold foolishness. That's why he was able to receive the foolishness from his what? From his dumb friends that he grew up with. Because his mind was idle. Because the old men were going to make sure that his mind does not remain in the state of idleness. Because idleness teaches much evil. And that is the evil that he did to receive from his dumb friends. Because what? His mind was idle. He was void of responsibility and accountability. That was the problem with Rehoboam. That is the state of the mind of the black man. Lazy. We don't want to think. We don't want to take up a, a, a farming instrument and plow in the vineyard of the Most High God. That's why the Most High God is so hard on us, the men. Okay? Because we are the leaders of the community. We are the pillars of the earth. Read that again. Verse 14 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 14. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel, mm -hmm. and he that, and he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. He will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, go back to Sirach forty-seven, verse twenty-three again. Ecclesiastes chapter forty-seven, verse twenty-three. Mm -hmm. Thus rested Solomon with his fathers. And of his seed, he left behind him Robo, even the foolishness of the people, and one that had no understanding, okay. who turned away the people through his counsel. You see that thing? He says he turned away the people through his counsel. Where did he get the counsel from? From the young man that he grew up with. You understand? Wait. There was also Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who caused Israel to sin. And showed Ephraim the way of sin. Because he did what? He commanded the people to go to worship idols. He created two golden calves for them to worship and he fired the Levites. Okay? That's what Jeroboam did. Okay? Watch this. Go back. Go back to 1 Corinthians. 
First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 again. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. I thought as a child. Okay. Now, what's still, this is the state of the mind of the black man. Who needs to be what? Who needs to stand up manfully so that the Lord can give him responsibility? Once you stand up as a man, the Lord will give you responsibility. What is that responsibility? To wake up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, to be a leader, to be a pillar in the temple of our God. That is what the Lord is looking for. The most that God is not looking for mama's tempered voice, yellow makes me sick, yellow makes me sad, pink makes me cry, wait, want me to make, want, it, it wants me to make one I hug my mother. No. Mm -mm. Read that again. Verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Read. When I was a child, I speak as a child. Mm -hmm. I understood as a child. Read. I thought as a child. Now watch this. Remember the things that they said. Hold on, wait. Remember the things that they have Go back to First Kings and uh, pick something out of that verse. First Kings 12, verse 11 again. First Kings chapter 12, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And now, whereas my father did lead you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father has chast chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Watch this. Give me Sarah 21, verse 18. Ecclesiastical 21, verse 18. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 18. Mm -hmm. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. Because what was coming out of Rehoboam's mouth was talk without sense. He had no sense. He had no discretion. Because he was void of understanding and wisdom. He was a broken vessel. Read that again, verse 18. Ecclesiastes 21, verse 18. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. Mm -hmm. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. The knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. The knowledge of the unwise. Because the unwise has no knowledge. There's only foolishness in his mind. No knowledge. The knowledge is the law. The only knowledge that the, the unwise has is what? Foolishness, childishness. That's what you're going to find in the, mind, in the mind of the unwise. Void of responsibility. They don't have no accountability. You can't tell them nothing. You understand? Read that verse again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18. Mm -hmm. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. And the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense. Is as talk without sense. So go back to First Kings chapter 12, verse 11. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 11. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 11. And now, whereas my father did lead you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father has chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Name what? I'm going to make your situation worse. Okay? Because he didn't care about the people. He did not care about the people because his job was to teach what? Was to teach Israel the laws of God. He didn't want to do that because that requires a man. You, re you are required to be a man for you to teach your people. A boy will not teach nobody. Okay? You need your, the requirement is that you be a man first. You stand up manfully. Then the Lord will advise you so you can go and advise your people. That is the requirement. Okay, and Rehoboam understood that, but he did not want that because that was not his desire. His desire was not to his people. His desire was to his own lust. Okay, he was selfish because that's what children are, selfish. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 34. Matthew 12, verse 34. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Mm -hmm. 
for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. He says, for, because out of the abundance of the heart, the heart, the mind, the mouth speaketh. The things that was coming out of Jeroboam's mouth is what was in his mind, okay? His mind was uttering vain things because he, he was a broken vessel. He could, not, he could hold no knowledge. He could hold no knowledge. So the stuff that came out of his mouth was not to build a nation. You understand? He was only interested in his own selfish lust. That is the reason why he could not hold no knowledge. So guess what? Out of the abundance of his evil mind, the, his mouth spoke. And the things that came out of his mouth was nothing but evil. Okay? Read that again, verse 34. Meaning what? He had no filter. Rehoboam had no filter because the thing, because how do you, how do you get a filter? The laws of God will give you a filter. When you open your mouth, it will be through wisdom. You will profess the wisdom of the Most High. Okay? Read that part again. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Watch this. Go back to Sarah. Give me Sarah 21 now, verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood, and his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. You see that thing? The knowledge of a wise man, he says, shall abound like a flood, a flood of water, a river of understanding. And his counsel is like the, a pure river, is like a pure fountain of life. Hmm. That's the wisdom of the Lord right there. Okay? And it never fades. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood, and his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. Jump down to verse 17. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. They inquire at the mouth of the wise man in the congregation, and they shall ponder his words in their heart. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 17. They, in, they inquire at the mouth of the wise man in the congregation, and they shall ponder his words in their heart. They shall ponder, meaning they will meditate the words that he will speak out in their mind. They will meditate upon the things that they say. You understand? Read that again. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse, verse 17. They inquire at the mouth of the wise man in the congregation, and they shall ponder at his they shall ponder his words in their hearts. Jump down to verse 21. Verse 21. Learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold and like a bracelet upon his right arm. Because guess what? The ornament, the gold, you said gold is a is a precious, is a precious metal. Gold is a precious mineral. Okay. So that gold goes into what? The wisdom of the law. Because in order for you to to say that the, that's gold. What needs to happen to the gold? The gold, the impurities must be taken out of the gold first for that gold to be precious. The impurities need to be taken out. That means that gold needs to be melted. So you can get the tin out, the impurities out, and then guess what you have? You've got pure gold. Okay? That's the wisdom is talking about. It says is what? Like a bracelet upon his right arm. Because guess what? Actually, a bracelet, we used to wear real gold back then. Okay? Not the stuff that we wear today. All right? Read that again. Verse 21. Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 21. Learning is as unto a wise man as an ornament of gold and like a bracelet upon his right arm. Now go back to Matthew 12, verse 34, because this is what Rehoboam was not. Okay? Rehoboam was not what we just read. He was what we are about to read one more again. Read that again, Matthew 12, 34. Matthew chapter, chapter 12, verse 34. Mm -hmm. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Because what is a viper? A viper is a poisonous snake. That's what a viper is, a poisonous snake. 
So it says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mind, the mouth speaketh. Because what's going to come out? Poison. Deadly poison. Okay? And that's what Rehoboam did. That's why it says, even the foolishness of the people. Because he had no understanding. He was a fool. Rehoboam was a fool. Okay? Watch this. Give me... Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Once again. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Mm -hmm. I thought as a child. So now the Apostle Paul, I'm going here so that this verse can marinate you understand how children think. They have selfish thoughts. And the things that come out of their mouth is what's in the mind. That's why it says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I was, he says, I speak as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Because the things that the children will speak, what's sitting in their mind will come out of their mouth. They have no filter. Guess what? Because there's no wisdom to create the filter. They have no wisdom. That's why they have no filter. You understand? That's why Rebo spoke the way that he did. Because he didn't have sense. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 18, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 2. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. Mm -hmm. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. It says, a fool has no delight in understanding. He does not delight in understanding. How do you get understanding? You keep the commandments. The only way to get understanding, you must keep God's commandments. So that means he had no business, he had no desire in keeping the laws of God so he can receive the understanding to benefit the nation of Israel. Okay? Read that again. Proverbs 18, verse 2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. He says, but his heart may discover itself. Because when he says this, that meaning his mind, because he trusts upon his own mind, his own wicked mind that cannot hold water, guess what? He trusts upon that mind. He trusts upon the mind that is sick. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 28, 26. Read that. Proverbs 28, verse 26. Mm -hmm. He that trusteth his, in his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. You see that thing? He that trusteth in his own heart, in his own mind, is a fool. That's what Rehoboam did. That is the mind of the black man today. You said the Bible says this. He says, no, I feel my food throat, all of that. Listen, mm -mm. the most I don't want that. That's why it says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. But guess what? If you don't, if you hate counsel, it means you hate responsibility. That means you cannot be used. If the Lord can use you. Think about it. If you hate counsel and correction, that means you hate responsibility. That means you don't want to work in the most high God's vineyard. Okay. That means you hate your people. If you love correction, that means you want to get yourself right so you can wake your people up because there's no greater love than what Christ explained in John chapter 15. Okay? Go back to where was that? Proverbs 18 verse 2. Proverbs 18 verse 2. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. That his heart may discover itself because he trusts in his own heart. So he is a foolish servant because he does not understand the importance of keeping God's commandments because he's selfish. So when you see, when we go to the street, even in the camp, you give counsel, you don't want to follow counsel, it's because you are selfish. You don't have the spirit of charity. Okay? We go to camp, we teach our people, they hear the scriptures all day, but they still don't want, don't want to repent, it's because they are selfish. They don't care about their nation. They don't. 
When you look at that's why they rather join politics. They rather join these political systems because in those political organizations, no, but they, they are not required to change. They are not required to change their lives according to the laws of God because they hate responsibility. Because as long as you join politics, you'll, you'll always blame the oppressor for your problems. Your children don't listen to you is the oppressor's fault. Your wife don't listen to you is the is, no, it's a white man. You cannot get yourself together. No, it's a white man. No, it's you. You don't want to take responsibility for what you've done. Because once we take, there's power in submission. What does that mean? Submission means responsibility. When you humble down and acknowledge your fault, that's submission. What is the power behind that? You, you get to do what? You get to have wisdom so you can wake your nation up and rule the earth. That is the power that you're going to receive. Rulership over empire. But we don't think about it like that. Because Israel is always looking for out for number one, themselves. The black man is always looking, is only caring about how many women he can, he can, he can, how many women he can sleep with. As long as he gets his rocks off, that's it. Now he goes to jump to another one, he gets his rocks off again. Because of what? Void of responsibility. It takes a man. It takes a man to get married. It takes a man to be a father. It takes a man to build up his nation. You understand? It takes a boy to sleep around. It takes a boy to commit adultery. You understand? Read that part again, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. A fool has no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. You see that thing? But that his heart may discover itself. Watch this. Go back. Go back to where he was at. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11 again. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I speak as a child. Mm -hmm. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Really? But when I became a man, when I what? I put away. When I became a man. But when I became a man, you see, there's a process now. That's what the Lord. This is this is the part where the Lord is looking for. This part right here. This part right here. When it says, "When I became," if you are becoming, that means there's a process to you becoming a man. That means you need to be taught. There's a process. There's beginning of becoming a man, entering into manhood until you reach that full age of being a man. Okay, come on. When I became a what? But when I became a man, uh -huh. I put away childish things. I stopped being dumb. I stopped being selfish. I stopped being, being about myself. I stopped being rebellious. You understand? I started listening to counsel. I started applying the counsel. I started to retain and meditate and ponder upon the wisdom that's coming out every, every day when we have class. That's when you become a man. That's when you put away childish things. Childish things. That's the beginning of manhood right there. Okay? Watch this. Go back to 2nd verse 10, verse 33. 2nd verse 10, verse 33. Second Ezra chapter 10, verse 33. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. Remember what the Apostle Paul says, it is what, when I became, meaning it's a process, it's not an overnight thing, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. You understand? So now, for you to become a man, you need to stand up manfully. You need to know how to stand up, stand up, so you can become that man. And when you stand up, you becoming that man, you are slowly putting away those childish things. Watch this. Give me Psalms 94, verse 16. Psalms 94, verse 15. Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Really? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Read that again, verse 15. Psalms chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? 
stop right there. Or who will stand up says, for me? Who will rise up for me against the evil doer? Meaning, rise up. Okay, rise up against the evil doer. Read on. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? So now he's saying, who will rise up for me? Who will stand up for me? For rise up means to stand up against the evil doers, against the workers of iniquity. So in order for you to recognize the workers of iniquity, you need to understand what iniquity is for you to recognize those that work iniquity. That's how you become a man, to recognize those that work iniquity because you understand iniquity. That's when you become a man. That's when you step into that spirit of manhood. Read that again, verse 16. Psalm chapter 94, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Mm -hmm. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Against the workers of iniquity. Watch this. Give me... Hmm. Give me the book of Psalm 38. Psalm 38, verse 18. Read that. Psalm 38, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. Read that again. Psalm 38, verse 18. For I will declare mine iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. So iniquity is sin. Iniquity is sin. So you need to understand iniquity. That's when you start to become a man. You need to understand because the iniquity is the problem that is the judgment that, come, that has come upon us as a people. The state of the nation. Where we enter the people, wherever we are scattered. That's how you start to understand the problems that we, we as a people have and why those problems are occurring and they keep reoccurring generations after generation in our community. So that's when you start to become a man. When you start to see the problems in our community and why, then the Lord says, I'm going to give you a solution to solve the problem. That's when you start to become a man because now you're going to start to recognize the problem and you know the solution and your job is to do what? is to go out there and provide and give the people the solutions so the people can get healed. That is now when you become a man. Read that again, verse 18. Psalm 38, verse 18. Uh -huh. For I will declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. Go back to where we're at now. Psalm 24, verse 16. Psalm 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? The workers of iniquity, meaning the workers of sin. You need to know what iniquity is to identify those that work iniquity or those that work sin in the nation. And it's all 12 tribes. Wherever we are scattered, we are in the midst of sin. We are workers of iniquity. Our, your job as you become a man is to identify those problems and bring solutions. And the Bible has all the solutions to set our nation back in order, to set our nation back to be glorious, or to be the glorious nation on earth, as the Lord has commanded us, as the Lord has declared. Give me that in First John chapter 3, verse 4. Okay? First John chapter 3, verse 4. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So now that we understand that sin is the breaking of God's law, the transgressing of God's commandments, now we start to understand, okay, now that we understand that our people are in the midst of sin, they are breaking God's commandments, and that's why we are in the conditions that we're in. Now as a man, now we start to sit down. Let me search the scriptures to see whether, what the solutions are. To our problem as a nation. That's how men think. Men sit down, they identify the problem, they look for solution. That is what we are doing. We are providing solutions to our people to bring our people out of a lower estate. Okay? Go back to Psalm 94, verse 16 again. Psalm 94, verse 16. 
who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? The workers of iniquity. Watch this. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 4. Okay. Wisdom of, no, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 9. Mm -hmm. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. You see that thing? Right now, as a nation, we are hateful unto God. Because to love the Lord, we must keep his commandments. But because as a nation, we are not keeping the commandments, as a nation, we are hateful unto the Father. So we are workers of iniquity. The ungodly and his ungodliness, though his works or her works of iniquity, which is sin. They are both alike hateful unto God. So we need to return back to the Father so we can what? We can, give, we can have the love for the Father. We can love our Father which is in heaven. Okay? Give me 2 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Read that again. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So in order for you to be ready to revenge all disobedience, meaning what? To go and correct your people, to set them in the right order, you need to do, before you do that, you need to make sure that your obedience is fulfilled. Meaning what? You set your house in order first and foremost. That's how you become a man. But when I became a man, I put away childish, childish things. So when you put away those childish things, guess what? That's when you start to ascend into your manhood. How do you do that? You make sure that your obedience is fulfilled. How do you do that? Give me that in second, second answer. Chapter 14, verse 13. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Now therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. And do what? Comfort. And reprove thy people. You see that thing? Before you can reprove your people, you must make sure that your obedience is fulfilled. You set your house in order. Okay? You set your house in order. That's how you ascend into your manhood. Because when you set your house in order, guess what? You are taking responsibility now. Because only men take responsibility. Boys, they hate responsibility and accountability. Okay? Read that part again, verse 13. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order. Mm -hmm. And reprove thy people. Wait. Comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. Because what you need to understand is that when it says reprove thy people, meaning correct them according to the laws of God, show them what they are doing wrong. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Read that again. Wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. I need you to put some power in this day. That's one again. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Wait. Cry aloud, spare mm -hmm. not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sin. Is this, and show, show them in the Bible as it is written, their transgressions, what they are doing wrong. That's what it says, and reprove thy people. The only time you can show them their transgressions is when your obedience is fulfilled. You understand? And the house of Jacob, they are saved. That's how you work. You deal with the workers. You stand up for the most High God against the workers of iniquity. Who are those workers of iniquity? The house of Jacob. The house of Jacob is we are the workers of iniquity. So the prophet's job is to go out there and show the house of Jacob what they are doing wrong. So the house of Jacob can 
take responsibility and accountability for what they've done so the Lord can have mercy upon us and deliver unto us the kingdom. Okay? Go back to Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13 again. Second Ezra, chapter 14, verse 13. Right. Now therefore, set thine house in order uh -huh. and reprove thy people. Right. Comfort such of them as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. So the only way that people are going to be comforted is when they know what they are doing wrong. What is the comfort? This is the wrong that you are doing. This is the solution. And this is the reward when you apply the solution. That's how, that's when the comfort comes in. The comfort comes in when they see the reward of applying the commandment. Because right now, you first you must show them the judgments for breaking the commandment. Now you must show them what they are doing wrong and what and what. You must comfort them by, show, by, by showing them this is the solution and this is the reward if you apply the solution. You see that thing? And now renounce corruption. Corruption is going to be renounced in the mind of our people. They're going to stay away from it. Guess what they are doing? They are obeying the gospel now. Okay? That's when respons responsibility is the only way a nation is going to be exalted. Responsibility and accountability. You need to take accountability and now start to become responsible for the things that you know they are, they are required to build the nation up. Okay? Give me Proverbs. Give me Proverbs. Okay? Give me Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Right now, we are a reproach right now as a people because of what? Sin, transgression. But it says righteousness exalted a nation. Righteousness is what? Accountability and responsibility. That's what righteousness is. Keeping of the commandments. Because when you keep the commandments, you will take accountability for what you've done wrong and you start to become responsible to make the right decisions that will benefit your nation. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. But sin is a reproach to any people. Right now we are a reproach unto the nations because of what? Because of our sin. For that reproach, for the Lord to take away that reproach, guess what needs to happen? We need to take accountability. We need to acknowledge our offenses and repent. Then we take responsibility to start making responsible decisions. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 14 now. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. The weak nature. What made us to be weak? What weakened us, what weakened us as a nation? Sin. Sin weakened us as a nation. That's what it says. It says, what put off now the weak nature. Sin is the weak nature. Because naturally, we're not supposed to be what? We're not supposed to be a reproach. Naturally, we're supposed to be the rulers of the earth. We're supposed to be dominating everything and everyone. But because we did not what? We did not want to take responsibility and accountability to ascend into our manhood and our womanhood. Guess what? Right now, we have, a, we have a weak nature. We have a weak nature. What is that weak nature? Sin. Sin is the weak nature that we took off and we put off the, the what? The strong nature that the Lord has given us, which is what? The commandment. Okay? Watch this. Give me Isaiah 46 verse 8. Isaiah 46 verse 8. Isaiah 46 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 8. Remember this and show yourselves men. Bring it again to mind, O ye transgressors. Now, you see what he's saying to Isaiah? He says, remember this. What? Show yourself men because we forgot. We forgot to, how to show ourselves men. We forgot how to be men. Now the weak nature is that now it's, 
is, it is natural now. It has become natural to become overgrown babies. It's a natural thing now to become overgrown babies. That's why it says, remember this because you done for God. And show yourself men. How do you do that? Because in order for you to show it, people must see it. For you to show yourself a man, that means the nations must see you ascending into that manhood. Guess what needs to happen? You need to stand up for this gospel. You stand up for the Bible, the Lord will allow the people to see you as a man. Okay? That's why it says, remember this and show yourself men. How do you do that? We stand up for the laws of God. Bring it again to mind because we forgot. Oh, ye transgressors, because transgression is what causes us to forget, to, to forget how to be men. Sin. Sin has taught the black man how to be an overgrown baby. Now we need the laws of God to remind us of how to be men and how to remain men, to maintain the state of you being a man. Okay? The laws of God do that thing. If you are disciplined in the laws of God, guess what? That's exactly what's going to happen. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Kings 2 verse 1. First Kings chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the days of David drew nigh that he should die. And he charged Solomon his son saying, okay. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man. You see that's that word again. Show thyself. How do you do that? Show yourself. Give me Matthew 5. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. He says, show yourself. How do we do that? This is how we do it. Matthew 5, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Because in order for you to show it, the people must see it. For the people to see it, you must show it. Meaning what? You must act it out. You must apply it so the people can see a change. That's how the people will see it because you are showing it. How do you show it? You apply it. You understand? Read that again, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's how you show it. Go back to where was that now? First Kings 2. Verse 2 again. First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong therefore and show thyself a man. And show thyself a man. Watch this. Give me the book of Revelation chapter 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, and verse 11. Revelation, chapter 11, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood up, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Great fear fell upon the nations that saw us. That's why it says, show yourself men. Meaning the nations must see us ascending into, the, into, into manhood. They must see them. We must show them how to be men, according to this Bible. That's why it says, when we show them, great fear is going to fall upon them that see us. That means we must do what? We must let our light shine. We must apply this Bible so they can see what it means to be a man, what it means to be a father, what it means to be a husband, what it means to be a wife, what it means to be a woman, a mother, what it means to be a nation, what does it mean to be married, what does it mean when you say we are a nation, what does that mean? We must show it. How do we show it? We apply what is written in this Bible. It is going to take pain, but it's going to take responsibility. Is going to take a willing spirit and a willing mind to get this work done. No excuses. Read that again, verse 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 11. Mm -hmm. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, mm -hmm. and they stood upon their feet, and great fear 
fell upon them which saw them. It says, and they stood upon their feet. They stood up on their feet, and great fear fell upon them that saw them. Watch this. You see that part when it says, and stood up? That's why it says, who will stand up for me? Who will rise up for me? Only those that want to be men will stand up for the Lord. And when they do stand up and take all of this Bible and clothe themselves with righteousness, the world going to see and fear will fall upon them. That's how you bring fear to the nation. You don't bring fear to the nations by voting, by marching, by doing, doing. No. You bring fear to the nations by becoming a man. How? According to our God has commanded it. That's how we're going to put the nations in fear. When we keep God's commandments. When we keep God's commandments, the nations will be in fear. There's no information about it. No. We're going to put the nations in fear when we keep God's commandments. Go back to where was that? First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. First Kings chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, and show thyself a man. Really? And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. To walk in his ways, really? to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. You see, there's something heavy about this verse. You see that part it says, as it is written in the law of Moses. What is King David saying here? He's saying, you must go and read. As it is written. So if it's written, what means to happen? You need to sit down and read it. That's why it says, as it is written. Because you read that all the time. As it is, okay? No. It's, the, it's written that way for a reason. Because what? It's written so you can do what? You can go and read it. Watch this. Give me Revelation 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed, whoa, whoa. Blessed and is they, he. Wait, wait. Blessed is he that what? Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is, blessed is he that readeth. Because he, if he's reading, guess what? What needs to happen first? Something must be written for him to read. That means you must sit down and study. That's why you set your house in order. You sit down and study this book as it is written. Because it's written for you to study. It's not written there so you can be kept closed and you don't apply nothing that is written. No. It's written so you can sit down, open the book up, and read and apply what is written. That's how you ascend into manhood. Okay? Read that again. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Read. Blessed is he that readeth. Mm -hmm. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. You see, he's telling you, so in case you forgot, it says, and they that hear the word of this prophecy and keep, meaning apply those things which are written therein, because the time is at hand. The time of the second coming of the Messiah is at hand. You see that part right there? And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Meaning what? There's no time for playing games in this story. You understand? Because you must read the things that are written and apply. Keep them. So the world can see you ascending into manhood. See you standing up manfully. So fear can fall upon them. What is the fear? The fear that will fall upon them is that our time of rulership is over. You understand that? Go back to where it was at now. First Kings 2 verse 3 again. First Kings chapter 2, verse 3. Wait. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God uh -huh. to walk in his ways, Wait. to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of Moses, mm -hmm. that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Wait. That the Lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me, saying, if thy children take heed to their way they do what? to walk before me in if thy children take heed to their way if they take heed if they take heed 
they take this Bible serious. They must be great. Okay? There must be great when it comes to this book. They must take heed to their way. Go ahead. Verse 4. That the Lord may continue his word, which he spake concerning me, saying, If thy children take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul, mm -hmm. they shall not fail thee, said he, a man on the throne of Israel. Meaning what? You're not going to fail. If you keep the things that are written therein, you're not going to fail on the throne. You'll be a pillar in the temple of the Lord. That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. 2 Chronicles 28, verse 9. What we need to understand, you know what? Go back to 1 Kings 2, verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 2, read verse 3. 1 Kings 2, verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. Remember, King David is giving King Solomon responsibility here. That's why it says, show yourself a man. How do you do that? You apply the things that are written therein. You must sit down, study, apply. So the Lord can be able to direct your path aright. Okay, so you can walk in the way of righteousness. So King David is giving his son, King Solomon, responsibility because that's what a father does. A good father will give his children responsibility. He will make sure that they are not idle. Okay? Second Chronicles 28 verse 9. First Chronicles. I'm sorry. First Chronicles 28 verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9. Mm -hmm. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Read that again. Read that For again. The Lord oh, no, search read. read that part again. Read that verse again, verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, mm -hmm. and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Stop right there. It says, serve him with a perfect heart. You see that word again? Perfect. So that means King Solomon is required to be perfect for him to serve the most High God with a willing mind. He must keep the commandments. That's the gateway to perfection. Serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus. Okay. Give me the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 35. Exodus chapter 35, verse 5. Exodus 35, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. Read that again. Exodus chapter 35 verse 5. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. Now watch this. Give me the right 35 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 35 verse 1. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings enough. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. Now watch this. You see now it says you must bring an offering with a willing heart. What is that offering? You keep in the commandment. Who is the offering? Give me that in uh, Romans chapter 12. Okay. Romans 12. Romans 12 verse 1. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. 
I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that thing? We are the sacrifice now. We are the offering. We are that offering now. How do we offer ourselves up? We keep the commandments with a willing heart and a perfect heart and a willing mind. We are that offering. We are sacrificing ourselves this day. That is what the Lord is looking for. Go back to Exodus 35 verse 5. Exodus chapter 35 verse 5. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it, an offering of the Lord, gold, silver, gold and silver and brass. These are precious, these are precious minerals here. Gold, silver and brass. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Judges chapter 5. Judges 5 verse 2. Judges chapter 5 verse 2. Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. You see that thing? When the people willingly offered themselves. When the people willingly offered themselves. Because this is the type of men and women that the Lord is looking for. Those that are going to willingly offer themselves without complaint, without murmuring, without any backbiting. They are going to willingly offer themselves before the Lord. Gold, silver, and brass. These are the metals that the Lord is looking for. Read that again. Verse 2. Judges chapter 5 is 2. Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people Bless ye the Lord. Because these men, these judges, these governors, you see when he says, my heart is towards the governors of Israel, meaning the leaders of Israel. So you sisters need to read this and say, you know what, we need to pray for leadership. Because you know what the problem is with black people? Black people, oh my God, man. You see, the reason why you see these organizations not succeed is because black people are up in there. Instead of black people praying for the leadership, they're going to do what? They're going to sabotage the leadership because they want to be on top. Instead of praying for the leadership to move in the right spirit to be able to judge the people righteously. That's how you build the nation. You understand? It says, my heart is towards the governors of Israel. You see what, what, our, foremothers is, what our foremothers are doing? They are praying for the leadership. My heart is towards the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people, meaning what? They put their lives on the line for the nation of Israel. That's the love they have. He says, bless you the Lord. You see that thing? This is the mindset that men and women must have to pray for the leadership. Okay? Go back to where was that? Go back to Chronicles. Okay? First Chronicles. Chapter 28, verse 9. Mm -hmm. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Really? For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. You see, that's what happened to us. Because we did not do that. We forsook the Lord and he cast us off. We went into slavery. Okay? If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. This is King David instructing his son, giving him responsibility to be a man. Next verse. Verse 10. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. You just replace the name of Solomon with yourself. Replace Solomon with yourself because this is to us. He says, take heed now for the Lord has chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. Be strong in the Lord and get it done. 
Because if you are strong in the Lord, the Lord will give you the strength and the wisdom to build the house of the Lord. That is what's going on right now. This is fulfillment of that prophecy. Read that again, verse 10. First, First Chronicles, chapter 28, verse 10. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build an house for the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Be strong and do it. It says, be strong and do it. Watch this. Give me First Chronicles now. First Chronicles again, 22. Let's start at verse 1. First Chronicles 22. This is the responsibility that every man was given. Follow, and then the women are following up. The women are not going to follow anything that does not exist. That is not there. The woman must follow because we have decided to put our boots on and be men. First Chronicles 22, verse 1. Read what you got. First Chronicles 22, verse 1. Then David said, this is the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord God. And this is the altar of the burnt offering for Israel. Really? And David commanded to gather together the strangers that were in the land of Israel. And he sent masons to hew road stones to build the house of God. So now he's gathering the people together to build the house of the nation of Israel. That's what he's doing. Isn't that what we are doing right now? Yes. We will go out there to make sure we go out to the street corners that the house of the Lord may be filled. When they come in, they need to be given responsibility of what they need to do. That's what David is doing here. He was building, he was getting ready to preparation to build the physical temple. Guess what we are doing? To build the spiritual temple because we are the temple. We read on. And David prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates and for the joinings and brass in abundance without weight. You see what he did? is that David prepared iron in abundance for the nails for the doors of the gates. Guess what? what? What are we preparing? Right now we are preparing for our people to come in so that when they come in, they have the fruit of the spirit. We give them the fruit of the spirit, which is what? The commandments of the most high God. When they come in, they'll be eating the fruit of the laws of God. That is what we are preparing. That's why he says, he prepared what? He says he prepared iron in abundance. Guess what we are doing? When we study, we are preparing the fruits of the spirit, the spirit in abundance. So when the people come in, they found the three core soldiers of Christ where people can be able to pick fruit from and eat the good fruit that's coming from this tree. Really? Also see the trees in abundance. Mm -hmm. For the Zidonians and they of Tyre Put much cedar wood to David. So now he says iron, cedar trees. You know, these are these diverse type of fruit. Come on. First Chronicles 22, verse 5. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord must be exceeding magnificent really? of fame and of glory throughout all countries. Mm. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. Now watch this thing. This is some heavy stuff right here. It says, this, this house that needs to be built, it says, must be exceeding magnificent of fame and of glory throughout all countries. Hmm. Watch this thing. Must be exceeding magnificent. Give me the book of Isaiah. Give me Isaiah chapter 65. Okay. No, give me Isaiah 62 verse 1. Isaiah 62 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1. Mm -hmm. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burn it. So the Lord is saying for Zion, he says he's not going to hold his peace. For Jerusalem, he says he's not going to rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, that's the law, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burn it. So that means what? The Lord, he says, he's going to give us the law and all the nations will know that we are Israel and we're going to be looking glorious as ever because we are the, we are the, we are the temple. Okay, next verse. Watch this. 
and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. And the Gentiles shall what? And all thy king. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness. He says the other nations are going to see our righteousness. They're going to see that day. The nations are going to see our righteousness. That's why it says it's going to be famous. We are going to be famous. Everybody going to know that's the children of Israel right there. The same way they know we are the children of Israel because of the curses, they're going to know we are the children of Israel because of the blessings that the Lord will put upon us. Read that again. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, mm. and all kings thy glory. Uh -huh. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Meaning he's going to make sure that all the nations know that we are Israel. Okay? That's some heavy stuff right there. That is some beautiful stuff right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 26. I mean Ezekiel 36 verse 26. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26. Mm -hmm. a, new a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. Uh -huh. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. He's going to give us the law. Come on. And I will put my spirit within you mm. and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. You shall keep my judgments and do them. Jump down. Read on, read on. Read verse 28. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave you, that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Read. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And I will call you, and I will call for the corn and will increase it <clears throat> and lay no famine upon you. The Lord says he's going to take care of us. Come on. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that ye shall receive no more re reproach of famine among the heathen. Because right now we are receiving reproach of famine among the heathen. We are impoverished and the heathen are laughing at us. Jump down. Jump down to the 33. Verse 33, thus saith the Lord God, in the day that I sh shall have cleaned you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities, and the wastes shall be builded. Meaning what? Jerusalem is going to be built again. It's going to be looking glorious as ever. Revelation 21 verse 1. Revelation 21 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This is a change of world. The new kingdom being set up on earth under the Israelites. Come on. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. You see that thing? He says he saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Meaning what? It's going to be so glorious. It's going to be as if it just came down from heaven and sat on the floor. That's how glorious it's going to be. It's going to be magnificent, exceedingly magnificent. It's going to be famous. Everybody's going to know about that thing. Guess what? Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So the most that God is going to put the glory his glory upon us and all the nations will know we are Israel. Go back to Second First Chronicles 32. Verse 5 again. First Chronicles 22, verse 5. And David said, Solomon, my son, is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for the Lord God, for the Lord must be exceeding magnificent of fame and of glory throughout all countries. I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly 
before his death. That's what we are doing now. We are preparing abundantly for the kingdom of heaven that will be established upon the earth. Because we are the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is Israel ruling on earth. That's the kingdom of heaven. That is what we are preparing for right now in the spirit of Christ. Read on. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. And David said to Solomon, my son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord my God. Mm -hmm. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, thou hast shed blood abundantly and has, great, and has made great wars. Thou shalt not build a house unto my name because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Because David, well, I mean, David, during the time when David was the king, there was war on every side. You understand? His job was to make sure that there's peace on, there's peace on every side so that when it's time for the temple to be built, they'll be able to what? They'll be able to build the temple that was promised that is going to be built to the most high God. Come on. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall I who shall be a man of rest? And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon. And I will give you peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. So this is the Lord making a promise to David what he will do during when Solomon is the king. Give me an answer, Acts 47 verse 13. Ecclesiastes 47 verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 47, verse 13. Solomon reigned in a peaceable time and was honored, for God made all quiet round about him, that he might build a house in his name and prepare his sanctuary forever. That's what we just read. Go back to where you were there. First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 10. He shall build a house for my name. And he shall be my, verse 9, behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about, for his name shall be Solomon. And I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. Okay. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son. And I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Really? Verse 11. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he had said of thee. You see that thing? The same thing that is being told Solomon is the same message that is given to us. We must build the house of the Lord. That is the responsibility that the men of Israel we have been imparted with. Read. Verse 12. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding and give thee charge concerning Israel that thou mayest keep the law of the Lord thy God. Because the only way to build the house of the Lord, we must build it with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Read. Then shalt thou prosper if thou takest heed to fulfill the statutes and judgments which the Lord charged Moses concerning Israel. Mm -hmm. Be strong. And of good courage, dread not, nor be dismayed. When it says dread not, meaning don't be fearful. Don't be fearful, nor be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Come on. Now behold, in my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord an hundred thousand talents of gold, and a thousand talents of silver, and a thousand thousand talents of silver, and of brass, and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add there too. That thou mayest add there too. But listen to what King David is saying. He says, Now behold, in my trouble I have prepared for the house of the Lord. You're not going to do this without pain. Don't get it twisted. Give me that in Micah 4, verse 10. You're coming back here. Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. What did he say? Be in pain 
and labor to bring forth. He says, be in pain and labor. Be in pain and labor. To do what? To bring forth what? To bring forth Zion. You're going to be in pain while you are laboring. Go back to where he was at now. That's Chronicles 22, verse 14. That's Chronicles 22, verse 14. Now behold, in my trouble have I prepared for the house of the Lord and hundred thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and of brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add thereto. Really? Moreover, there are workmen with thee in abundance. They are what? They are workmen with thee in abundance. Because you see what the Lord is, is telling, is, uh, what King David is telling King Solomon? He says, moreover, there are workmen with thee in abundance. So guess what? Right now, hmm, hold it. Give me the book of Matthew real quick. Give me Matthew. Watch this. He says, there are workmen with thee in abundance. Give me Matthew 20 verse 1. We're going to read a small parable. Okay. Matthew 20 verse 1. Matthew chapter 20 verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. To hire laborers into the vineyard. The householder is Christ. Christ is the householder. Okay. He's hiring laborers into the vineyard. The vineyard is the house of Israel. Come on. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. The penny, the penny is the reward, which is the kingdom. He sent them into the vineyard. Come on. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So in the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. Guess what? When it says there's laborers, you understand? It says, moreover, there are white men with thee in abundance. Guess what? They are idle in the marketplace right now. Our job is to go out to the street corners to get them into the vineyard, to come and labor in the vineyard. When it says they are prepared for thee, who's not supposed to prepare them? We're supposed to prepare them because right now they are sitting idle. Our job is to go out, get them in, and prepare them to do the work. Ray. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Mm -hmm. Again, he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. You see that thing? So it was the third hour, the sixth, and the ninth hour. Remember, this is the process of time. The ninth hour is what? The ninth hour is closer to the what? Is closer to the time when Christ will return. But before that, during the, the third, the sixth, the ninth hour, then the eleventh, then comes the eleventh hour. The twelfth hour, that's when the Lord shows up on the scene. This is now... This is years in, in, with, with Israel waking up in the truth. Who's supposed to wake them up? Us. Wait. Verse 6. And about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Wait. They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. You see that part? He right said, there? Because no man has hired us. Who's supposed to hire them? We're supposed to go out and hire them. That's why Christ says, I will make you fishers of men. We have to go there and hire laborers into the vineyard. So when David is saying, no, they are prepared, we must prepare them. Okay, come on. He said unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Read on, verse 8. Okay. Verse 8. So when the even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their high, beginning from the last unto the first. He says, Begin with the last first. 
the last must be first and the first must be last. Okay, the first is going to be last, the last is going to be first. Okay, that last that's going to be first is Northern Kingdom. That first that's going to be last is Judah. Okay, that's the, that's the heaviness of the parable here. Okay, come on, verse 9. Verse 9. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. They received any, every man a penny. Okay, that's it on that. Go back to where was that? First Chronicles 22, verse 15. First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Moreover, they were workmen, they are workmen with thee in abundance. Mm -hmm. Hewers and workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. For every manner of work. To work in the vineyard. Different skill sets are going to come in to help us to build the nation, to build the infrastructure. Okay, come on. Of the gold and the, the silver and the brass and the iron, there is no number. Arise therefore and be doing, and the Lord be with thee. He says, arise therefore and be doing, meaning get the work done, and the Lord be with thee. Really? David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying. You see that thing? It says, he commanded the workmen, the princes, to help Solomon to build the house. So guess what? When you come into this truth, the Lord has commanded you to, to, to be here to come and help build the nation of Israel. You are here to do, a, to do a job. Your job is to what? Is to follow instruction and get the job done. No murmuring, no complaining. Okay? That is what we're reading here. So what you, you need to remember, you need to... Uh, hmm. Could you read verse 15 again? First Chronicles 22, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Moreover, they are workmen with thee in an abundance. Hewers and workers of stone and timber, and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. Okay, verse 16. Of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise therefore and be doing, and the Lord be with thee. So now he's mentioning different workmen here for different offices. Watch this in Ephesians 4, verse 11. Let's look at the spiritual understanding of what David is saying. Ephesians 4, verse 11. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets mm -hmm. and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now you see that thing? This is what you are, this is what's gonna, this is what's coming in now into the body. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Come on. For the perfecting of the saints, uh -huh. for, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Because we are, we represent the body of Christ. So all these different skills, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, they are for the perfecting of the saints, okay? For the edifying of the body of Christ. Come on. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God mm -hmm. unto a perfect man, uh -huh. unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. He says, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The stature goes into age. Full understanding of the scriptures. Okay? Enough for us to build the nation of Israel. That's what this is going into. Go back to First Chronicles now. 22, verse 17. First Chronicles 22, verse 17. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Read. Is not the Lord your God with you? And hath he not given you rest on every side? For he hath given the inhabitants of the land into mine hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Read. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God, Arise, therefore, and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord 
and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. Read that verse again, verse 19. That's a heavy verse right there, okay? Very, very heavy stuff. Read verse 19 again. First Chronicles chapter 2, verse 19. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary, the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. It says, and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. You see that part when it says, mm, jump up, jump up to verse, let me see what verse I want. Did you read verse 15 again? First Chronicles 22, verse 15. Moreover, they were they are workmen with thee in abundance, hewers and workers of stone and timber, and all men of cunning men for every man of work. Read on. Of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise therefore and be doing, and the Lord be with thee. Watch this. Give me the book of Ephesians, okay? Give me Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Uh -huh. Come on. In whom all the building fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Read. In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So now, Christ is the chief cornerstone. We, un we understand it. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians. Okay? Give me First Corinthians chapter. Give me First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three, verse twelve. Start of verse eleven. Hmm. You know what? Start of verse nine. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine. Mm -hmm. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. We are God's husbandry. We are God's building. Come on. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. As a what? I have. As a wise master builder. As a wise master builder. Come on. I have laid the foundation. Mm -hmm. And another buildeth thereon. Really? But that every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. He says, but let every man take heed on how he buildeth thereon. Meaning you must be very careful on how you build. Okay, watch this. Come on. Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Read that again. Read it right. Verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that, then that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He says, there's no any other foundation that you can lay other than Christ. The only right foundation that you must lay upon is the foundation of Christ. Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Next verse. Now, if any build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, so now he says, now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, the wood and the hay and the stubble, that is the foundation that you don't want. You don't want to build upon the wood, the hay, and the stubble, but you want to build upon the gold, the silver, and the precious stones. Read that again. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Read. 
every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Mm -hmm. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. That's why it says, be very careful on how you build. The how is very important. You must build upon the foundation of the apostles, Christ being the chief cornerstone. And this is the foundation, the type of material that you must use to build this foundation. Gold, silver, precious stones. It says, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, meaning by trial that will come upon you. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, go back to First Chronicles now. 22 verse 19. Wait, read verse 16, then we're going to jump down to verse 19. First Chronicles 22 verse 16. Of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise, therefore, and be doing, and the Lord be with thee. Now, you see what it says? It says, gold, silver, and brass, and iron. There is no number. Meaning what? In order for you, it says there's no number, but you need to do what? You need to actually labor to get the gold, the silver, and the what? The brass and the iron. This is the type of material you must look for. He says there's no number. It's in abundance. But you know, how do you get access to this type of material? You need to labor. It requires fire in order for you to refine this type of material. You understand? Guess what? Jump down to this 19. This 19. Uh -huh. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord, your God. Arise, therefore, and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God. To bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the and the holy vessels of God and, and the into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. Hold on. And the what of the and the what of the Lord and the holy vessels of God. And the holy vessels of God. The holy vessels of God. It says, build the house. Okay, it says, build the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. Give me 2 Timothy 2, verse 20. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. You see that thing? So the wood, the hay, and the stubble is those dishonorable vessels that we read about in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? Read verse 20 again. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. But in a great house, there are, not, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. So this great house is the house of Israel. In this great house of the nation of Israel, is that there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, the same vessels that King David is talking about, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Our job, brothers, is to what? We are aiming for gold and silver and brass and iron. We don't want wood and of earth. We don't want that. We are not looking for those vessels. We are looking for honorable vessels. Gold, silver, brass, and iron, and precious stones. We know, verse 21. Verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. He says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, Page himself from which vessel? The wood, the earth, and the stubble. If you page yourself from these, it says he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified with the laws of God, and meet, meaning good for the master's use. Who's the master? Christ. And prepared unto every good work. Go back to say 1 Chronicles 22, verse 19. 1 Chronicles 22, verse 19. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord, the Lord your God. All 
Christ did fall, and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God, to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into the house that is to be built to the name of the Lord. So those holy vessels that we must bring into the truth, into the camp, is the gold, the silver, the precious stones. You understand? We are not looking for wood, hay, and stuff. No. We are looking for honorable vessels, those that will have to humble down, do what this Bible says. That is what we are looking for. That's why it says you must take heed on how you build. Build upon the foundation of the apostles, Christ being the chief cornerstone. Go back to Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Verse 20. Verse 20, 20. Let's get to the point. Ephesians now, this Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. He is the chief cornerstone, all right. Come on. Verse 21. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Okay. In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So you see that part when it says, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. So what you want to understand, you see the Apostle Paul, oof, he was happy. Look, look at the words he used. He says, in whom all the buildings fitly frame together. In order for you to, to fitly frame something together, you need to examine each piece separately. Once you are satisfied with that piece, you bring it to the Lord. And when you bring it, you don't just throw it. You have to find a place for it. And you must fitly frame it into the whole Lord so that it can fit in like a puzzle piece. You see that thing? That's why every brother, every sister, we need to have counsel. So we can what? We can examine you, give you the scriptures pertaining to the problems you are dealing with, so you can be fitly framed together into what? Into the congregation. So you can work together with others in the, in the form. That's why the Apostle Paul is saying what he says right there. Okay? That is some heavy stuff right there. Give me that in 2 Ezra 5.17. We're going to close. 2 Ezra 5.17. Ezra 5.17. Knows thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? The whole nation of Israel is what? Is our responsibility to wake up the 12 tribes. That's what it says. Read. Up then, and eat bread, and forsake us not, as the shepherd that leaveth his flock in the hands of cruel wolves. So you see that the up then and eat bread, meaning what? Sit down and study, understand the problem set, get the solution, go and comfort your people, so we can get up out of here. That's what he's saying, up then eat bread, the bread is the Bible, the body of Christ, forsake us not. As a shepherd that liveth his flock in the hands of cold wolves. Because as long as you are to, you don't want to get yourself together, your people are catching hell out there and you have the solution, you don't want to give it to them. That's the spirit of that's not being the that's not the spirit of a man. That's the spirit of a poor. Okay? I'm gonna end the class right here. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also took this cup, when he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye to show the Lord's care till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you. I mean, sleep.
In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most high to the class.